GM Canada President Scott Bell is with us now. Thanks for being with us, Scott. Yes, thanks for having me, Amanda. So let's just start with the, uh, the, the retrofit of the plant to, to produce face masks. Um, how difficult is it to turn a plant that was focused on one thing to focusing on this? Well, the team's done an amazing job to, to convert part of this plant. As, as you know, we, we invested $170 million here at the end of last year to reinvent this plant to be a parts manufacturing facility, which is just getting off the ground. Uh, but in the interim here to do uh, what's right for Canadians and to help the government here get the proper PPE out in the, out in the, uh, out in the country, uh, we were asked to put uh, an operation together to build masks for the federal government. And uh, the plant has been converted. It's actually in the process. We're doing a trial run here today with some uh, training that's happening. So in a very short period of time, we've been able to convert that over. What kind of uh, training is required? You know, the workers who will be involved, obviously this, there's all be new territory for them, as well as the investment you got to make in retrofitting. What did all that entail? Yeah, so uh, it's, you know, these workers are, are amazing. They, they come to work when we build vehicles, which are very complex, as you can imagine, and we're, we're calling back those, some of those workers to help us with masks. Uh, they, they know to adapt or know how to adapt to new, new jobs. These jobs are a little different, but all in all, it's a, it's a manufacturing process. And, and uh, what we do best is volume, and, and, and that's what the government needs, is they need these things in large mm -hmm. quantities. So we're going to make a million a month here. So uh, the team has been able to adapt very quickly uh, to this new, new product of ours. Scott, one of the big uh, questions for many workers at a manufacturing plants uh, across North America has been worker safety and finding that balance. Uh, it is inherently less safe than some other types of jobs. Uh, what, what, how can you reassure your workers and what have you heard from them about their concerns on that front? Yeah, we've, we've spent a lot of time with our workers on that topic. So we have invested heavily in first education and communication up front so they know what to expect when they come into these uh, plants. As you can imagine, our workers were already used to. Safety is a very uh, high priority for us uh, at these plants, so they, they understand wearing protective gear. Uh, so to introduce a, a few more things to them is, uh, I would say, a little less cumbersome than maybe in an office environment, but so they, they get that. But we've, right. we've, we've, we start by trying to keep, keep it out, right? So our, our, our intent is to keep people home if they, if they show signs. But when they come here, then we got to do everything we can to make sure that they're doing the right thing at home before they, we let them in and then uh, do everything we can to prevent the spread. So uh, uh, it is evident and you can see it here uh, uh, as we walk through the gate. Uh, there's questionnaires, there's hand sanitizing happening, there's a mask that's delivered, uh, and then there's uh, thermal uh, readings uh, to make sure they don't have a temperature. Uh, and that's just before they walk into the plant and social distancing obviously a uh, key throughout that. We've heard from GM CEO Mary Barra that uh, the company hopes to have its, its full capacity back up and running by June 15th. There are some caveats in there, uh, but where does that leave the, uh, the Canadian operations? Do you expect to be resuming normal operations for car manufacturing within the next month? Yeah, so, uh, so our commitment is to, is to start our assembly process on the week of the 18th, so next week. We have two assembly plants here in Canada, so that's, or we have one assembly plant in Cami, and then we have a, an engine transmission plant in St. Catharines. So uh, to, to get those plants up and running, and they won't be at full capacity, we're gonna, we, we, we're gonna slowly uh, phase in these plants, so one shift, no overtime, uh, make sure the protocols are in place, being followed, uh, as we've been working on those for months anyways before we get to this point, but we are uh, slowly ramping up uh, both the both operations here uh, in 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 Canada. There has been a kind of a, a, a stuttering start, I guess, Scott. We're going to hear more from the Premier of Ontario today. Different provinces are taking different approaches. We've only got about 30 seconds here, but are you worried about the kind of lack of cohesion or coherence around how provinces reopen? Well, I think we've done a great job of, of communicating with the government. The government's done a great job of working with us as we've been helping them with the, the mass production as well. Uh, it is critical that we, as a, as, a, as a sector, work together. So I think there's a lot of collaboration happening across all manufacturers in this sector. Uh, so we feel pretty confident that we're finding our way through this pretty smoothly so far.